My guest today is Michael Richardson. Michael, how are you? Great, how are you? I'm doing really well. What do you do for a living, Michael? I am a uh, software engineer at uh, Kruger Technology. I am the currently the tech lead on the SEO team, but I am actually moving into an engineering manager role. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. I, uh, I am a longtime customer of Kroger. They're, they're not here in Chicago except uh, uh, with that name, but they bought a local chain here, so I'm still a customer. Of yeah, I, we run under a bunch of different banners, yeah. so uh, you, it makes things quite interesting. Yeah, and you probably know that I actually lived in Cincinnati for about 10 years and worked right down the road from the Oh, Kroger that's awesome. Yeah, I love Cincinnati. Great, great, great city. Great city. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, Yarn Berry. Uh, because I, I know you're doing a lot of work in the technical community, and you're uh, you're mm -hmm. speaking about it. Uh, what is, what is Yarn, and what is Yarnberry? So Yarn is a node package manager, mm -hmm. and it came about uh, some years back as a, a alternative to npm, which was the default package manager for Node at the time. But uh, there were some flaws at the time with NPM that Yarn was seeking to make better. And mm -hmm. so they, uh, Facebook and a couple other companies came together and worked on creating an alternative, the alternative package manager called Yarn. Hmm. Okay. And then when you say Yarn Berry, what exactly does that mean? So a couple years back, um, the lead maintainer saw that the code base for Yarn was changing and they, there were different, there was a different direction that he felt that the project needed to go. So he decided to, to do essentially a full rewrite of the code base and he called that Barry. Hmm. Now that has been called, became called Yarn 2 and uh, now there's yarn three and actually four is coming out soon so i think it's clearest to just call it yarn berry and that applies to all the one plus versions got it okay I, yeah it's um it's sort of like um uh, android doesn't instead of having version numbers they start out just giving food names yes to their, yes <laughs> I, their new ice releases. cream sandwich i think was one of them yes <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, that. But it, it does make it hard to, to Google or Bing these things. Like, I bring up yarn berry, yeah. and it just seems to be berry-covered yarn, or berry-colored yarn. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, is, exactly. Uh, if they misspelled it like everyone else does, <laughs> it might have been that. Right, yeah. Y-R-N. You, know, you get to drop yeah. the vowels. There you go. It. Disembowel it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, okay, so um, it's a package manager. Well, first of all, let's, let's just define. What do we mean when we say package manager? Certainly. So... When you are working on a project, uh, you probably don't want to write all the code yourself. Uh, you want to rely on the code of others that have came before and uh, it's open source and, and various other options there for uh, your code. And so you need a package manager to bring that third party code into your code base. And the package manager is what does that, manages different versions, manages how those packages are installed and referenced by the runtime, and uh, a lot of other things that package managers tend to do as well. And you know whether that's managing your workspaces or you know making sure that you're able to pack up your code so that it can be shipped out as well. Tell me a little bit about the developer experience. If I'm writing an application and I want to consume some packages in my application, what what do I do with Yarn? Certainly. So. Um, the, the, it's pretty similar to most other package managers. You essentially say, hey, add this package, and you can say a specific version, or you can uh, give version ranges, that kind of thing. Most Node developers will be familiar with that experience. You can use like a caret or a tilde, depending on your uh, preferences around which versions of the package to accept. Okay, so it's a command line tool. Correct. That's correct. It's 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 uh, it does have an API, so it is a JavaScript tool, and it exposes a JavaScript API, so you can interact with it in that way as well. So if you have specific needs with the tool, you can actually uh, interact with it that way. Hmm. Okay. 
Uh, what about, uh, do you know anything about uh, if I am a creator of packages? How do I interact with it that way? So th that's what, Yarn will also allow you to, to pack that and publish that package that way. Hmm. Okay, also, also a command line tool. Uh, Correct, yes. All right. Um, and you mentioned that it's uh, it's an open source tool. Tell me a little bit about the the licensing and if there ever is a cost for it. Or uh, open source is such a broad term. Certainly. So Yarn is a fully free open source software. Uh, there is no pricing model. It is um, it has one primary maintainer and then uh, several other maintainers as well. Um, especially since. Uh, it launched, you know, they've been gaining maintainers. I've actually made some small contributions myself to documentation yeah. and uh, reporting issues. Thank you. Um, but uh, yes, there is no actual, there's no cost to the tool at all. All right, I see the, I'm looking at the GitHub page right now, github.com slash yarn pkg slash berry. And yes. it looks like uh, somebody named Mail Nissan, whose name I'm almost certainly mispronouncing, is the lead maintainer for the thing. Um, That's and correct. He and he works for Datadog. So what's, what's Datadog's relationship with this project? M my understanding is that Datadog is a, is a fan of the YARN project. They use it themselves. And so they've decided, it, and you know, probably for the publicity as well, they decided it's, it's worthwhile to support uh, Mel in his uh, work on YARN. Tell me about some of the features of uh, YARN Berry. Cool. So with the rewrite uh, of Yarn into Yarn Berry, there's been a lot of developer experience enhancements. So the command line interface has uh, become cleaner and easier to read. Every line is going to have an actual code associated with it, whether that's it's just output, you know, as far as standard, this is what it's doing, or it's a warning, or it's an error. In each of those codes, you can look up and actually uh, figure out more details around that error message or warning or whatever that might be. It also uh, supports some really cool features, especially around workspaces, which is a big thing with Yarn. Yarn was one of the first to introduce workspaces, and mm. then y Yarn Barry has enhanced support for that. A lot of really uh, cool features around whether you want to do something in each workspace or you want to do it in a specific workspace. What, what is a workspace? So workspace allows you to collect several different packages or projects together into one, I think mean, .NET you'd call it a solution or something like that. But then to manage the packages um, at a both at the project level and then at the workspace level as well. Uh, allows you to really easily import packages within that workspace into each other, which works out really well. And then, um, yeah, that's it. So workspaces gives you a lot of flexibility that way. Hmm. Makes managing on mono repo a lot cleaner. Um, you're... Um uh, what if somebody wants to get started with this? Where's a good place to start? Somebody hasn't used well, so Yarn before. If you've, if you, a lot of people have used Yarn One. That is kind of okay. the default uh, for for a lot of people. And getting started with Yarn Two is is uh, pretty straightforward. Yarnpackage.com, I think it's .com, has uh, migration docs, and it'll teach you how to migrate from Yarn One to Yarn Berry, whatever version is current. Um, okay. But yeah, and by the way, there's uh, yarnpkg.com is the URL I'm looking at right now. Yep. Um, the, but um, then on top oh. of that, if you've not used Yarn before, you can really just dive in, install it, and then uh, start using it. Um, you don't have to graduate to Yarn Berry in all of your projects at once. It's not where you don't have to install a specific version into your CLI and then use it. Yarn has this really cool feature. I, I often call it version pinning, where essentially you can say, hey, for this specific project, I want to use this version of Yarn. And it will actually download that version of Yarn and save it into your project repository. Then you commit that to source control. And from that point on, anyone who runs Yarn 
on your on inside that project will use the um, version of yarn that has been embedded into that project it means oh. that you don't have these inconsistency issues where d different people are getting different results mm. or your uh, yarn lock file is changing uh, because different people are using different versions it, it gets rid of a lot of complications along the way Got it. Yeah, I've had that issue before where uh, suddenly something isn't supposed to break, but it does. Right. And, or it's it really doesn't break, it just behaves differently sometimes with a different version. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, now, is there, just to be clear, there's uh, the, the using yarn 1.x makes sense if you already have a project that has invested in yarn 1.x. But for yeah, greenfield projects, it really, uh, it really makes sense to use the latest version, correct? Absolutely. So, and even for a, a, a yarn 1.x project, it's the, the migration path to, to yarn berry, yarn 2, 3, or 4 is not that hard. It's, it's um, you know, a pretty simple upgrade. Definitely, you, you might encounter a few problems if, if a few small issues if you are, have a complex project for a lot of uh, less complex projects, it's essentially seamless. The p place where it gets the migration gets a little more complicated is when you decide to if you decide to move to plug and play, which is this really interesting new install strategy that Yarnberry has really uh, pushed to the forefront. Oh, tell me about that. Certainly. So, in the Node ecosystem, there is this folder called Node Modules, and that is where packages are typically going to be installed. Now, the, one of the difficulties with node modules is it gets massive. Uh, you know, in a standard node project, you may have thousands of package that, packages that you depend on, at least hundreds oftentimes. And those will all get installed uh, full size into node modules, all of the files, everything in there. And that uh, folder becomes huge and difficult to manage. You end up having to delete it occasionally and things like that. Hmm. Plug and play is a very interesting strategy where Yarn will download the package itself. It will save it into a cache folder as a zip file. And then when Node requests, it, it, it actually hooks into Node. And when Node requests a, a file from that package, it will go into that zip file, pull out the, pa the file that's being re requested, and hand it to Node. So that Node is totally seamless to Node, that Node doesn't realize there is no Node modules folder. Plug and play will download those packages into that cache, and then the, it doesn't have to extract them into the Node modules folder itself. Hmm, interesting. So it's intuitively, it sounds like that's you're adding an extra step of extracting from a zip file, but you're telling me that that's actually faster than pulling it directly from a folder. It, it can be, it's, 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 it, from what I can tell, there's no significant performance overhead. Um, sometimes, depending on your hard drive and your, your processor, uh, I actually had this experience at a prior job where we zipped files up and, and so that we could save space and we were concerned that maybe that processing time would add extra um, overhead and make things mm -hmm. slower, but what we discovered was it was actually faster to read the smaller file and then unzip it because the file uh, read time was lower and okay. the processing time was insignificant. So I've not, in, in the performance testing that I've seen and I've done, there's not been any significant performance overhead to using it that way. And in fact, it can be, a, a, for your daily tasks, it's gonna be significantly faster in a lot of ways. One of the reasons you, because you can, with the way that it saves those packages into zip files, you can actually commit those to your repository, which means that as soon as you download the repository, you're ready to go almost. You don't have to um, download all of those packages from that repository. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've done that before. I'll open up a project, a node project, and wait 10 minutes while <laughs> all these dependencies download from the yes. internet. Yes, exactly. Um, Excellent. Is there anything we haven't discussed that we should have? You know, it, it, with Yarnberry, I it's just a, basically something worth giving a try. If you're in the Node ecosystem, if you're uh, using NPM or Yarn1, uh, it's definitely something to try out. If you're 
even if you're using yarn one and you plan to continue using one, try out the version pinning option. It's basically yarn set version and then you set a version and it'll mm -hmm. install it. We've discovered at Kroger that that's been hugely helpful for us in eliminating uh, problems and, uh, you know, just something that's worth trying. I, but we've been super happy with the plug and play strategy. We use the zero install stories in, in some of our projects and, and that's been great for us as well. Excellent. Uh, before I let you go, I want to ask you about Momentum Developer Conference. I know you're heavily involved Thank in you. that. Yeah, so Momentum Developer Conference is uh, an event that I help organize. It's in Cincinnati on October 20th, and uh, tickets are on sale now. We've got some great content lined up. You can check all that out at MomentumDevCon.com. Uh, really awesome stuff. It's going to be a great event. If you're in the Cincinnati area or feel like making the trip in, highly encourage you to join us. Excellent. Uh, well, I hope I can make it down back to Cincinnati. I, I miss my friends and family there. Um, we, we'd love to have you down sometime, David. It'd be fun to see you down here. Uh, it's a deal. Uh, I've just got to figure out when. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Michael, exactly. Michael, thank you so much for your time. You stay safe. Thank you, David. Take care. I've had a great time talking about technology today with my friend David Yard.